Hello, everybody. In this episode, I am kind of showing some of the updates with the new 2017 Premiere updates. It's now 11.1 version of Premiere. Uh, they've added a couple things with the new version of Premiere, and two things I'm going to be covering in these next couple episodes are going to be these items right down here, Essential Graphics and Essential Sound. This episode is specifically on the Essential Graphics. They've really ramped up uh, their graphics a bit in Premiere, and uh, this I'm just get, getting started. I will do a more in-depth uh, episode a little later, but I'm just going to show the basics of it and show what they've added. First thing you've noticed with the updates is they kind of changed uh, your your toolbar here. They've kind of categorized some of these items with selection tools. You can, you'll have to hold down your arrow over these and, and choose different tools now. Or if you're just using the shortcuts, those are the same. But one thing that they've really added down here at the bottom is, first of all, you'll notice this uh, pen tool here. A rectangle tool and ellipse tool and your pen tool for drawing your own shapes for making basically like shape layers now inside of Premiere. And this and this is really helpful with the new titling system that they have. And they've also added this T down here, the type tool. If you hold down this, you got your vertical type tool and your regular type tool to type text onto the screen. What's kind of cool about this is it's just it's a lot easier now to generate graphics and titles inside of Premiere. A lot easier. I know that there's a couple little bugs you need to work out. First bug that I've noticed here, as you go down Window and Workspaces, uh, you'll find these uh, this little titles uh, set layout added here, but if you click on this workspace, it does nothing. It, it works on the essential audio, but it does not work on the essential titles. And I've tried this on like four different systems, and it seems to have the same effect, so I don't think it's my system. I think it is the update. So what I'd rec recommend doing here is I kind of like uh, to start out with a color layout here. If you go to the color layout, and then you go up to window, and you click on the essential graphics window, it'll pop that up as a free-floating window. There it is. Uh, now you can just grab this tab here, drag it and drop it. I'm going to put it right here in the middle of uh, my color, so it's like this rectangle right there in the middle. Let go, and it drops it there. I'm going to grab my Lumetri color panel. I'm going to do Control w and close that. And in fact, I'm going to go over to my Lumetri scopes, Control w close that. And this is a really good layout to use for your graphics here. Now I'm going to go up to Window, Workspaces, and I'm going to save and I'm going to save as a new workspace here. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to name it My Titles, just so I remember this is my layout here until they get this little bug fixed here. I'm going to hit OK. And now that's saved as a layout there, and I'm ready to start working in uh, the graphic mode here. In fact, I'm just going to move this over, see a little bit more of my image, and I'm going to update those changes. I'm going to click on this and just say Save Changes to this workspace, and I am set. So now with adding uh, titles, what you got up here is you got Browse. You can go and find uh, templates that have been that are online. Uh, under libraries, you can pull this down and do under the Adobe library you can pull this down and say things like credits, graphic overlays, lower thirds, slights. In fact, if you click on one of these here, and you pull down one of these here and you click on it, it's going to populate this. And it, sometimes it'll take a few seconds because this is this is reading Adobe's basically online library here. So you have to be connected to the internet. It'll access this library and you'll be able to find updated templates here. And when you click on one of these and use it, if I grab one of these and drag it down into my timeline here, it's going to load that motion graphic. It takes anywhere from a, a few seconds on up to a few minutes to load these sometimes, but it is now downloading this to my computer and using it in this project here. But I'm just going to cancel that, get rid of that out of my timeline there. Okay, and the edit key up here is where you do your own graphics. And you start your own graphics by doing one of two things. You have your, ty your type tool down here and you have your pen tool down here to draw shapes. You can start by drawing a shape or dry by clicking on your text here. I got my text selected. Let's show this example. Actually, let's start with graphics first. I'm going to start on my pen tool. Let's pull this. I'm going to hold this down and select a rectangle, but I'm going to click and drag up here and it will draw a graphic. Already you see that I generated a new graphic up here, some options to change it, and look what it's done down on the timeline. Right where my playhead was, it puts a new little file down here. I'm going to zoom up on that, and you'll see that it's called a graphic. So that's basically the shape, shape that it's generated right there. But now we can mess with this. We can grab this, so you can change it just like a video clip and do a fade in, fade out, and do a control D or command D on a Mac. Well, that's selected, it makes it, uh, we'll just fade in and fade out. I know that's an amazing graphic there, but you have these options over here. So with this selected, say we want to do a border. We've got the what's called stroke. Stroke will do a border around it. We're going to check mark that. And uh, now this is how many pixels. It is one pixel stroke width here. So if we click away from that, 
that and deselect it. It's really, really subtle, but there is a border around that. And I'm going to select it, select the graphic here. By the way, if you have something deselected, one thing that I've noticed, you got to select it and notice nothing is showing up up here. You got to go back up here and select the object that you're playing with here because this little, because this little file down here will contain multiple layers. You like, uh, you can do text to it. You can do your shape layers. You can do a whole bunch of different graphics and you can actually in your keyframing area over here, you can keyframe and animate those things as well. I'm going to select that and notice it pops back up and it's got a wireframe around it. It's got, it's got this border around it and everything and you can uh, manipulate it. Anyway, uh, but let's go down to stroke and I'm going to grab this stroke and I'm going to drag it to the right and you'll see that border growing there. So now we can create a border to this and another thing that we can do is we can create a drop shadow. In fact, let me brighten this up a little bit here and bring up my exposure in this video so we can kind of see what we're doing. Add some contrast to it. There we go. And go back to my titles, select this object and now we can drop click drop shadow and you have the same drop shadows as you kind of did before with the titler. You have your distance. You can see that drop shadow kind of moving out there. You can see your, so you can soften that drop shadow there and then you can change the opacity and also the angle of it as well to make kind of a subtle drop shadow. If we bring it down over the couch here, you'll notice that little drop shadow is kind of faint there at 60% opacity and now it's completely opaque. I'm going to change the color here, make this a little bit lighter color, kind of something to kind of represent the background. Maybe you can click on your little eyedropper here, move around and say, let's kind of choose this little kind of maroon sort of color. Hit OK and change that graphic there. In fact, we can even make that a little bit brighter if we want to. And there we go. So we've got our so we've got our little border up there. And actually, while this is selected, if we want that, if you're trying to do some sort of news graphics or whatever, you can actually grab your opacity to the entire object and turn it down. And there we go. We have that graphic up there. We can kind of see through it a little bit transparent there. Let's select this graphic again. And if we want to add something to this, and if we want to add to this graphic here, we can either generate a new graphic by clicking out, out of that, and we can generate something new by going to our text and clicking on it. But I'm going to add to this one right here, this one file to keep everything kind of nice and consolidated. So I've got this graphic selected. I've got my text selected here, down here in my toolbar, and I'm going to click inside this box here. And notice how it's added a text layer. We've got a text layer, and we have that shape layer that we were originally working with. There's our text layer, and I'm going to type something in here. And type in starring Ted Johnson. I'm going to have that up here. So let's go. I'm, I'm going to select this whole thing in here. I'm going to do control A to select all my text in there. And you have your transformation items down here. We have our uh, text size. You have your positioning. Kind of like your basic Photoshop options up here. If we want the center, I'm going to go down and center it. And now I'm just going to grab it and position it over here to the right. You can even just grab it if you want to. Or you can use your numbers over here. Move it up and down like so. And now we can add a little drop shadow to it if we wish. Kind of feather it off and make it stand out. Now you can choose which font you want to use. My only critique of this right now is you cannot like select it and just arrow down through the fonts like you used to be able to, which was kind of nice in the earlier Premiere, and I'm sure they're going to update that at some point, but we can choose the one that we want. And once we find the font that we like, we can choose our arrow tool, move this and get it kind of centered in the graphic there. And there we go. And these up here work also as a hierarchy. If we grab this and drag it down below the shape, now it is behind the shape layer. It got a little more faint. In fact, let's turn up the opacity here so you can't see through it at all. And now our text is hiding behind that graphic. So if we grab that and move it on top, now it's on top. And that is how the hierarchy works here. And one other little cool feature with this now that you couldn't do with the earlier text um, inside of Premiere is you can simply grab this clip here. And if you want to use this kind of a uh, font and the sort of look over and over again. I'm going to hit control C and copy this, move down my timeline and I turn off my bottom one. So it pastes up here and control V and paste. It has generated a brand new graphic that no longer references this graphic right here. In fact, now I can just, now I can just select this here and go up and select my shape layer. And I can, uh, and if I want this moved to a different part of the screen, I can move this down and I can grab my text and I can move this down. And I have not found a way to move these in groups yet. If anybody finds that out or figures that out, please let me know. But now we can move those down here and I can click on my text tool and change this. Type in a new name, shrink this down. There we go. And you can put as many of these as you want on the screen. It will all be embedded inside of this little file right here. But now as you look, we We've got this one that's now a new standalone graphic and this one that is its own standalone graphic that was basically copied and pasted from this first clip right here. So fairly simple, fairly fairly easy to use. You also have when you select a clip, you'll see all those indi individual layers. And this is kind of reverse as it is over here. You notice the shape hierarchy over here. Uh, the shape is on the bottom and below this text. And over here, you'll see these kind of b backwards. It goes from like the top down. So a little, little strange there, but that's the way it works with, uh, with the effects control panel. And there's a bunch of other features that I will cover in a more uh, detailed episode upcoming. But right now, a couple things that you can do here. And one example of that is you can actually 
do a template inside of After Effects. You can export that as a motion graphic template inside of After Effects, and then you can import it inside of Premiere and use it fr directly from After Effects and have basic control options in here inside of Premiere, so you don't have to be going back and forth between Premiere and After Effects so much. But uh, you can save options in here as well. You can right-click on these things, and you also, this is found up in Graphics as well, but you can go to Export as Motion Graphics Template. Now you can name it whatever you want to, and you have different places you can save it. You can save it to your local drive. Uh, they have shortcuts down here, but you can save it to your local drive or Essential Graphics, which is going to save it online uh, on your own. If you have your login, it will save it onto your own login. I'm going to say local drive. And like I said, if you have it under Essential Graphics, you will be able to access it from any computer as long as you're connected to the internet. But I'm going to do local drive, browse. I'm going to save this to my desktop, select it, and call this one Joanna, and hit OK and it has saved to my desktop. And if you need to import those, you can go up to Graphics, and you can say Install Motion Graphics Template. And it's going to ask you where you want to uh, import it from. And in this instance, I went to my desktop, and there it is right there. And it's already inside of this uh, project, so I don't need to do that, but you can send these to other people. They're usually very small, especially if there's no, like, um, especially since there's no video, it's all generated, and you can import it, you can email it to people, they can use it, and so on. So that's just a quick look at the Essential Graphics inside of Premiere Pro. It's actually pretty cool. It's a lot more powerful than, than the previous titler was. In fact, if you go down to your little new item icon and click, you'll notice that titler is now gone. And it's all right here and right here and within these files right there, all embedded. So it's really kind of quick, really kind of uh, efficient and easy to use. So if you have any questions, post them. In the next episode, I will be covering the essential sound function uh, that is now installed inside of Premiere 11.1.